Real fighting is bullshit. And really, this idea that a demonstration of fighting or fencing skills only valid if it could work in a fight to the death should really go away. Instead, I really would like people to start thinking more in the context of fighting demonstration and would it work in its context that it was intended for. Hello there, Oscar from Virtual Effects Shooter here, and this video, well, let's be fair, is going to be a bit of a rant, and it was prompted by a number of comments that I received and stuff I've put online recently and in years past that pretty much amounted to, but will it work on the streets, or will it work in a real fight? Now, if you then strike up a conversation with those people, it generally turns out that they have this idea that a real fight is a fight to the death, and I think that is a really dumb idea. So what I will try to explain today is why I think this is a dumb idea and what kind of questions you could be asking instead. Now I do realize that you, the average viewer of this channel, will not have ideas about these real fights or HEMA working in the streets, but it might be useful to have this video as a reference when you do encounter someone who has these ideas so you can actually counter their arguments effectively. Now let's get into it. Why do I think this idea of real fighting is really dumb? Well, it starts with the idea of a real fight in the first place. To me, really, any type of fight that takes place in the physical, real world is a real fight. And it doesn't necessarily have to mean that one of the combatants is going to end up dead on the ground afterwards. Instead, I'd really like people to consider that um, if you want to understand what's going on in a fight, or in a demonstration of fighting techniques, or fencing techniques, or whatever, you really need to understand the context that this set of techniques was meant for. If you can do that, you will understand this particular type of fight a lot better, and if you don't, you're pretty much missing the entire point. Now, people who have the idea that HEMA should be about real fighting, or that it should work in the streets or something, generally tend to come from two directions. The first one is from modern self-defense, and that one is really stupid. I'm going to address why. And the second has well, it's maybe a bit more benign, but still is playing wrong. It's a historical argument for HEMA being real fighting. Now, let's start with the self-defense. Um, I, I don't know what to say about that. But most of you will probably realize how dumb that sounds. Now, who the hell fights with swords anyway these days? It's not really a relevant martial art to know, right? Um, yes, maybe in some places in Haiti they have machete fighting in the streets sometimes. Um, some other places, sure. Sure enough, but most people who do HEMA tend to live either in North America, in Western, uh, Middle or Eastern Europe, and in China there's a bit of pretty big HEMA scene. So your chances of getting into a sword fight armed assailant over there, pretty fucking slim I'd say. So let's just for the sake of argument say that yes, you've prepared your leg of your fencing to be effective in self-defense. And you go about your daily business armed with a sword, and for some reason, <coughs> more privilege, you don't get arrested for that fact. And lo and behold, there is this one dude who carries a machete with him for some weird reason, pulls it out, and starts to threaten you. You take your messer, stab the guy through the throat with a perfectly executed long point. Then what on earth is going to happen? What do you think will happen then? Will you be lauded as a hero who saved himself with a messer? Oh, obviously not. You'll be probably indicted with murder charges, and to add assault to injury, everyone else who's been treating HEMA as what it is, a, a very fun pastime, will have their lives made a lot more difficult. Now, I don't know if there was anyone who needed to hear that, but there you have it. It's really stupid. Now, let's tackle the historical argument. Although this is a lot more benign, as I already said, uh, I do think it's wrong or oversimplified. And it usually stems from the idea that the fight books were meant for either self-defense use back in the day or for battlefield use. And that is just oversimplified and in the latter case also plain wrong. Back in the day, just like now, people got into fights for all kinds of reasons. There were drunken brawls outside of taverns, there were um, rows between neighbors that got out of hand. There were blood feuds, there were just insults that needed to be avenged. Um, people trying to maintain their honor, therefore drawing weapons to show that they were men business. All these kinds of things resulted in fights, and only very rarely did someone get killed during one of those fights. 
Now, I think we should really see the fight books in the context of all these different types of violence that a medieval or early modern person could uh, engage with. And yeah, how do we really make sense of it then? Well, one method that I really like has been described by Kaya Sadowski in her book Fear is the Mind Killer. I can definitely recommend that because not only does she provide a, a nice framework for contextualizing violence as we see it in historical sources, but she then also goes on to tell you how you can use that to build your classes around it. Anyway, um, I'm going to have to go on memory here. I think I will end out my copy, so if I mess stuff up, that's all my fault. My apologies. It starts with very much three variables that you can use to contextualize a fight. Um, something can be either playful or earnest, something can be symmetrical or asymmetrical, and violence can be social or antisocial. Now, playful versus earnest, that is, I think, very obvious. Um, sometimes you just fight or spar with your mates for fun, and sometimes it's an earnest fight, so there's actual a conflict that needs to be solved for violence. When it comes to symmetrical versus asymmetrical, what we mean by that is that with a symmetrical fight, both combatants have the same weapons and the same number of people on their side. Generally, that's one versus one with similar weapons, a duel, so to speak. But you also have fights where there's uh, different weapons, uh, a dagger versus no dagger, or a dagger versus a halberd, uh, to name but a few examples. And it could also be multiple people versus one, or versus a smaller number. Those would be uh, asymmetrical fights. Social violence pretty much means that a fight conformed to certain unwritten rules about what was allowed in a fight and what not. So, of course, there's a legal dimension in that, uh, but it's very much mostly a social norm. So for what reasons and in what way, with what intensity, was it considered uh, proper to engage in violence? Now, in medieval and early modern Europe, the vast majority of violence was social violence. So we're talking um, about conflict resolution, maybe. Now, there's pretty much five ways to respond to violence, as, as far as I can tell. You can, uh, you can flee, you can fight, you can posture, uh, uh, you can um, submit, or you can freeze. And pretty much the one that was most socially acceptable, so the one most uh, heavily incentivized to at least men in early modern and medieval Germany, was the posturing. And posturing quite often led to fighting, which was just a continuation of posturing, as long as they didn't actually mean to kill each other. The antisocial types of violence that you see a lot are, for instance, robberies or murders. But those things tended to be really heavily punished. And although there's a couple of plays in every fight book that deal with um, antisocial violence situations, the majority seems to be focused on teaching people how to deal with social violence. Now, we can look at Lekuna, for instance, as a case study of this. Now, if we try to analyze Lekuna's context based on these three variables that I've just discussed, you'll pretty much find the following. So the majority of the plays in Lekuna are meant to be used in a playful context, or at least practiced in a playful context. However, if the need arises, uh, um, a fencer trained in the style of Lekuzner or any type of Lichtenauer uh, type of manual would be required to use that kind of stuff in an earnest situation. As long as it was social and symmetrical violence, all these plays tend to be very useful even in an earnest type of fight. There are a couple of exceptions. Some plays are just simply only suitable for playful fencing, like the Backgammon Log or a couple of other really fun ones. And there's also a couple of plays that you can only do in earnest fighting because practicing them without proper safety equipment like we have now would generally result in serious injury or possibly even stabbing the foreign partners to death. So those things were only meant for earnest fighting and it's usually explicitly mentioned in that case. The majority of the plays though are meant to be practiced playfully but could be used earnestly if the situation called for it. Now, when it comes to symmetrical uh, or asymmetrical fighting, as I've already said, literally everything in Lekuzner is symmetrical combat, and this goes for pretty much most sources. Yes, there's this one play in Talhofer. It's one. There's a couple of plays that could theoretically work if you have multiple assailants, but by and large, most fight books consider symmetrical violence only. And that's when we get to social and antisocial violence, and I've already said a couple of things about that, because Lekuzner is pretty much mostly meant for social violence. There's only a couple of plays that would qualify as antisocial violence, 
cutting someone through the neck with a messer tends to either hurt someone really badly or if it's a sharp messer that's just uh, will kill them and there's a couple of other plays that you can use in anti-social violence to really mess someone up but generally already the text gives you an indication that this person attacking you has not been abiding by the unwritten rules of fighting properly therefore it's permissible in a way to also use anti-social violence on them so that is something to consider there. I think Lekuter makes for a very nice case study uh, for all the other Lichtenauer sources as well to show that yes those things could be used in earnest but they're most often practiced in a playful manner and therefore if you see someone showing a demonstration of this type of fencing and you see an argument that like hey this is not real fighting because it doesn't have certain things that you would have in a self-defense context or a real battlefield use context well that's because they were not explicitly meant for that most of the time so basically to cut the round short um, what what is the alternative how should we then engage in discussion about certain demonstrations of fighting or fencing well you can for instance instead of asking hey would this work in the street or is this a real fight you can ask hey, has this particular uh, technical skill been demonstrated properly? Does it work well? Is the tempo right? Uh, how about the structure? Those are things you can always discuss about. Um, and you can do that in a proper and simple manner without problems. But perhaps even more importantly, you can ask the question, does this demonstration fit the context that it was meant for? Yes, this requires research, this requires effort, but it will lead to far more productive discussions. Try it. Well, I hope I've given you a couple of arguments to counter the inevitable people showing up at HEMA United and other places with these arguments that I've tried to dissect a bit. And I, otherwise, I really hope that my rant was amusing and that you learned something about it. Anyway, thanks again to everyone supporting me, especially my patrons. And yeah, stay safe, keep fencing, I'll catch you in the next one.